We took the plywood up from our earlier video. You know, we were glad we did. We found a lot of mold and other problems. <clears throat> um, so I went ahead because I had some caulking left over from other jobs. It's basically free. I went through nine tubes of caulk to seal up um, the wheel wells and then all the holes that are left over after you take the seats out and take the plywood up. And something to remember, when you take the seats out and you pull the bolts up, or you take them out, or you cut the tops off and let them drop, or they don't drop and you cut them off, they've been loosened on the bottom, so they're now not watertight from below. So you might think because the bolt's still in there, it's sealed, but it isn't. Water can still get up inside. So I might've gone a little overboard around the um, wheel wells, but I had plenty of the caulking and I just basically troweled it on like sheetrock mud. Um, so, and then what I also did was, well, I'll show you that in a minute, but, um, so if you come on up, babe, you can sort of show the magnitude of how many holes we're dealing with in here. There's gotta be a hundred penetrations in this floor that had to be dealt with. Now, I could have welded it, but the problem with welding is some of the holes are three eighths bolts or three eighths holes. You have no idea what's underneath. There's grease and oil, there's a fuel tank here. You can set a fire below. You can set the undercoating on fire. And furthermore, when you weld a fresh weld, if you don't paint it right away, it rusts almost immediately. So we're kind of up against the same problem. And it just, this way felt like a more organic way to deal with the problem. Um, so if you pan down here, you can see all of the holes, it gives you the idea of how big of an area we were dealing with. I'm looking for the fiberglass tape that I used. Oh, right here. So, I used some of this, <laughs> it's like extra strong fiberglass tape. I don't know that I needed the extra strong, but it was right there at Lowe's, so I grabbed it. And this is how I dealt with the holes. I tore, like you can see some of it, I didn't worry about covering it all up, but and you can see that, you can see the like, um, the pattern in the caulking. Because some of the holes are bigger, I just want to give it a little support to back up. It worked really well. I just cut this, touched it down over the holes, and then it also identified all the holes. So when I was coming along with the caulking gun, it was easy to find them because they were already been identified. Um, and I've never really seen this before, but it really turned out to be a really good solution, I think. Um, cut. As I talked about earlier, you can see if you pan down here, you see the slight change of color in the floor. That's what this um, Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer ends up drying like. So it, uh, it goes from sort of a milky whitish blue to kind of a satiny finish, if you will, when it's dry and it cured really quickly. So it's easy to go over fast. I've never used one of these before. I've always seen them and thought they were kind of pointless, but it was on sale, that Black Friday thing. I got it without the battery. And I gotta say, this thing was amazing because that's a lot of pumping of caulk to get uh, this whole job done. I mean, nine tubes. And uh, this thing was incredible. So if you have the budget for it, because there's a lot of caulking that's been done on these buses, I would just get one of these. It's fantastic. And then also, I see uh, a fair amount of people on YouTube using dust masks when they're painting or putting down caulk. So they don't work. It's for dust. So if you, but an easy way to, uh, to figure out if it's working or not is if you can smell what it is you're trying to protect yourself from, the dust mask is not doing you any good for the chemical part, the organic chemicals. You need an actual filter for that. You know, so like, um, I don't have any, well, yeah. The other version of this that has the little discs on its side, that's the best mask to get. Slightly bigger than this, but it's still low profile, will fit under a welding hood. And then you can change your um, filters accordingly for welding, for dust, for chemical, for organic chemical. That's it. We have the first detail of our floor layering. So we've got the metal floor of the bus, one inch of that poly, polysocyanurate insulation and then we're gonna have an eighth inch of plywood and then like a light eighth inch worth of vinyl floor so the finished floor will be just one more layer on top of this so if you come on up in 
I put this plywood down just to kind of protect it while we're walking on it. Um, and I notice when I'm working on this stuff, you can't put your elbow down or your knuckles or even the like ball of your foot. You want to kind of flatten it out if you're on your knees and it, it won't puncture the paper. Not that I'm really that concerned with it, but um, just a little notation I found. Oh, and let me get walked by you for a second here. You're okay? So I was looking on, I think it was Bob Villa's website and they were talking about some guy told him how to make a, a cutter for the insulation board. It's kind of hard to see, but I sharpened this side of the knife and this thing goes through it like butter. It makes an awesome cut and you can kind of see it right there. That's how smooth of a cut it made. Fantastic little tip, cheap little knife. You can get the cheap ones at Lowe's or wherever. Um, <clears throat> so, bring it around. Oh, right. So, okay. Laid the, uh, the insulation down. Now, normally, if you recall, this floor is like a uh, eight inch C channel stamp that's running um, sideways. Normally, the next layer of whatever I do, I would run the other direction just for strength. But in this case, I went ahead and went sideways with the insulation. One, because it's so much easier to cut. Two, because I wanted the actual plywood that goes on top to go perpendicular to the effectively the rafters, which are the C channel of the floor. Um, I left gaps on the sides. Well, because partly because there's a lip there, so you can't go all the way over, but I left a little more of a gap because all the way around the perimeter of the floor, there's like a industrial sealant that provide or that makes a little like kind of high pot high part in the corner so i didn't want to run the insulation too far because it make it slope up uh sheetrock knife stop pause just an overview of how the floor looks in well sorry the insulation um oh they sell you this tape reflectix tape i don't know if it's more expensive than this regular standard um, hvac aluminum tape i just use this because i have it lying around and um, there's some tricks with this tape, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but so if you just walk down, you kind of see how it ended up. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sheets did this job. They're about 18 bucks a piece, just rounded up to 20. So it's $160 worth of insulation. And um, I'm pretty happy with it. So the next step is in two zones here, one in the sort of kids' bathroom area and one in the living area, we're gonna put down um, Reading floor tubing. Now, I went with 3 8 because for a number of reasons, but um, the, the, the maximum loop length for half inch pecs is 200 feet, but in this bus, I'm gonna have two zones at less than 100 feet. 3 8 is more than sufficient. Also, again, plumbing is nominal sizes, so half inch tubing is actually 5 8 and we're, we're fighting the battle of ceiling height, so I went with half inch because you get an eighth of an inch less. Also, um, the closer you can put your tubes together or your runs of your tube, the more effective it is because it's more surface area heat getting in the bus. And four, um, three eighths pecs, well, so let me start, half inch pecs has a minimum radius of six inches. So you can't bend it any tighter than six inches. Three eighths is four inches. So you get, I get one more actual run per zone, which actually makes a big, actually technically two, which makes a big difference in heat. Um, and, well, that was it for the tubing. So. so just some notes, and again, sorry if this is dwelling on the obvious for some of you pros out there, but <clears throat> uh, especially I find with sheet goods, when you're trying to effectively almost cut the negative sometimes, a good example is around these wheel wells. So you've all heard measure twice, cut once, real important. But I would, I would add, I would say measure twice, cut once, think three times. So your third step is to think again, how's this piece gonna lay in? Because when you mark this piece out to cut the wheel well, the first thing you tend to do is mark this distance, right? And then when the board's over here, it's really easy to mark this, make this first line down, but then cut the wrong way. And you'll end up with obviously um, insulation over here or panel and not here. It's really common to make that mistake. So when you're doing it, 
just you got to really visualize how it's going to run into place. I didn't make that mistake. I usually find that if I haven't done construction for a while, it takes me about five days to get back into the speed of it. But I didn't have that problem in here. But just something to think about. Also, um, well, that's for another day. We'll do that down the line. So some notes about this taping. This is aluminum tape. Um, I get the cold weather stuff just because it's uh, the adhesive is a little better and it, it um, obviously it's not affected by the cold weather. It goes on. It's still sticky. Something to bear in mind, this is like a little razor blade when the paper t is peeled off the back. So if I'm doing one little short piece, I probably just do it barehanded. Otherwise, I put my gloves on because what you'll do is when you're running down the edge to try to uh, smooth it down, you might slide it down. It's, it's the gnarliest paper cut. It'll slice your finger right open. Just be careful using it. But this stuff is amazing. Um, I have a little uh, place that I rent out, a small little place, and... If you know what the escutcheon is, or the beauty ring that covers um, a shower body handle, it's like about a five inch chrome disc that covers the opening to the shower, or behind the valve. I was lazy, I couldn't find it. I used this tape to tape around it, figuring I'd come back to it. 15 years later, it's still there, not leaking a drop. This stuff is amazing. Right now it's actually, I got six mil, um, sheeting up here and I've taped the edges with this tape um, and I'm confident it's gonna stay there and not be a problem. We got a B in here. 